Well, the grass is really not growing that good, but dandelions are growing better, I guess. But it's almost time to get the riding mower out. Well, Napa had the battery for on sale, $35.99, I think, but it has no handle on it. I got this at Walmart for $24.88. Five dollars for the old core charge, so for about twenty-six dollars and change, I figured I get it. If it's got no handle, why should I spend thirty-seven, almost forty dollars for one that has no handle? I might as well spend twenty-five for one that has no handle. They don't put handles on these anymore. But anyways, uh, the whole Walmart, so I got it. But they only guarantee them for thirty days. But yet they have a ninety-day return policy, so figure that out. Yep. Good old Walmart. Well, it's not 350 cold cranking amps. It's 275, I believe. But that only pertains to the real cold weather, anyways. When you don't run these, you don't cut the grass in the winter time. <laughs> so that's not a problem. The size is the same. The problem is the lack of a handle. In this particular mower. I have all I can do to pull out the battery with two hands with a handle because it fits so damn tight in there. So I'm going to have to modify that. But before I do anything, I want to very briefly put a load test on this. I have the big load tester, but you don't use them on these type of batteries. But for a very, very quick test, I will do that and make sure that the water level is up. And then I'm going to put a trickle charge on this before I put this into the tractor. First thing we're going to do is to put a, a voltage check on it. This is the positive and this is the negative. We're reading 12 and a half volts. Now very quickly we're going to put the load test on. These are the best kind of load testers um, to get. But not for these type of batteries so you do it real quick. You don't hold it on for 10 seconds like you do a car battery. Just a quick, quick, quick test. That's all. She went up into the OK range, which is 11 volts with this load on, and it's warm. That was just a quick. That's all you do on these things. Never, never put a car load tester on a tractor battery or motorcycle battery. Uh, if you do it, do it real, real, real quick. If it's dead, it'll definitely show immediately. Well, the two front tires on the tractor is gonna be flat as a pancake, so charging up the little compressor to pump up the tires. Now, you're probably wondering what these blocks are doing underneath the uh, axle of the tractor. Well, when I store this for the year, or even when I put it away for a few weeks because we don't cut the grass, we're lucky if we cut the grass once or twice a month here, uh, these front tires go flat. And what happens is if you don't have these under there, they'll go totally flat because the weight of the tractor's on them. And then it's hard to pump them up because they're off the rim. Literally, the seal is broken. The rear tires have tubes in them. I had them put in by Town Fair Tire years ago. The front tires, I never did that. So they're tubeless, and they never, never, never hold the air. They're both flat as, flat as a pancake if I was to take this weight out of here. So right now, I can't move this weight. But once I pump these tires up, I'll be able to pull these out by hand. So I'm going to get the compressor. I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. This is not much of a compressor at all. As a matter of fact, to pump up a car tire, you have to charge the thing up at least twice. But it's good enough for, for this. guess at it as long as I can push them in a little bit. They're not supposed to be that many um, that many pounds per square inch. Uh, 
added to these tires. Once I get this side pumped up, I'll be able to pull those blocks right out. Four by fours and a quarter inch piece of plywood. It gives me the height uh, that I need. Okay, now we can pull the tractor out. This is the first time this year that I've taken it out. anything in here. I tried mothballs in here. They evaporate after a while and you get your mice building in there. And each time I, I have to pull all the cowling off, you know, the whole thing. So I leave it off. On your old engines, years ago, this is all you had. You didn't have all that cooling fans and stuff. The old, old, you look at your old tractors, your real old ones. All they had was these fins on the engine. They didn't need a cowling to go over that to keep it cool, supposedly. You've got enough cowling here and the fan from this here to cool things down. I run this thing now without the cowling last summer and no problems whatsoever. But I'll be damned if I'm going to put the cowling back on here and have it uh, overheat got a lot of mice crop in here, but at least I can get it out. Because otherwise I'd have to pull all the uh, cowling off. I got the cowling. I didn't throw it away. It's in the shed. This is the inside of the shed that I uh, built for this tractor. I, I showed you this, and I don't know if there's a video on it or not, but nothing fancy. It's just some scrap wood that I had. And... Uh, four by fours I uh, pressure treated that I got from the bargain bin years ago and various two by fours and two by threes and uh, basically this is it it's spaced this way so things can drain off of it and uh, I keep my oil change pan up underneath here with a piece of metal over it so it's low because I had to work with wood that I had here and then I just put tarpaulin on it but it doesn't keep the water out completely as you can see because um, the tarpaulin is porous but it's better than keeping the tractor outside there's no room in the shed of course so we have to work with what we got to work with now if you take a look in here this is how much congested area I have here it takes two hands to pull the battery out because it just barely fits from here to here and with this thing here it's virtually impossible I'm gonna to have to remove this this is a um, a state you know a, a, a hold down so it keeps the battery from moving but I'm gonna to have to remove this because there's no way I'm gonna be able to get that battery out of there uh, without a handle it just fits very very tight in here the width actually uh, is the biggest problem or the length if you want to call it that and uh, with this in here it's virtually impossible so the battery will move around but I'll make something to go in there I don't know what yet right now I gotta take off this let's see what see what I mean about the mice getting in there and building things now if I had the cowling in there, I'd have to pull it all off every damn time I want to use the tractor. So I left it off. Because, like I say, there's enough cowling here. You know? And there's enough cowling here that the fan will blow down and onto it. But as I said before, 
you look back on your real old engines and some of you guys out there that do work on the old uh, lawnmower engines and stuff like that they didn't have these cowlings going over it you had the bare fins sticking right out in the open and they work just fine so I'm not gonna worry about it it hasn't crapped out yet and I only run it for a couple of hours anyways at the very most maybe an hour actually it don't take me long to cut what little grass we got here all right to try to get some of this stuff out. I'll use the air gun. That's where that little compressor does a lousy job. You get a couple of squirts out of it and the damn thing's out of air already. Them small compressors aren't much good. I got the one, uh, the 12 gallon Husky that I bought that I use my palm nailer with and uh, I could drag that out but I gotta pull so much stuff out of the shed but you know the original cowling came covered this almost all the way down to the end and uh, this was so packed that I just said to hell with it I'm just gonna leave the cowling off as long as you keep these fins clean and I'm no in small engine expert you know but you keep these fins clean shouldn't have any problem. Although some of the guys, uh, I had mentioned it before, and they said that you should not remove that cowling, but, well, that could very well be, but look at how much trouble you've got. You know, trying to get this stuff out. Can you imagine? having to take the damn cowling off two or three times a year because I don't and then at the springtime it's a nightmare I guess I could take this top off too but I don't feel like doing it you got to unhook the oil thing and then you could run the risk of having a leak in the, uh, the seal there the leak I got here is between the bottom block and the oil sump area, I guess you call it, and the block keeps loosening up. One time it loosened up so bad that it sounded like the engine was knocking, but it was just banging together. So I tightened it up, and then I had to put some RTV in there to keep it, because the gasket was so thin, uh, it uh, leaked oil. I'll probably get the air gun out and blow this crap out. Oh, man. Like I say, I've used mothballs in this before, but they work fine until they evaporate. You know, you go to put it away and uh, the engine's still warm, and uh, they evaporate almost immediately on a warm engine. I've even put mothballs in here before winter, and uh, well, you can see what happens. They build a nest after their smell is gone. The mice build a nest anyhow. I think this is my shutoff. I uh, had a plug in there, but it wouldn't uh, make good connections, so I hardwired it. And the starter, every once in a while, will spin out. I have to put WD-40 in it. And um, it was a pain in the ass. I had to keep taking the cover off, so I had to leave the cover off. I leave it off. try to pull it from the other side here. Come back on the video in a minute. Alright, I don't know if you, my big head's going to be in the way or not. But I'll take this off. I hate to do it because I get dirt in the uh, carburetor. I 
what we're going to do what we are going to do is what we're going to do is we got to clean this out before we do that I'm going to put something in here I'm going to put some tissue paper in here keep the dirt from going down into the throat of the carburetor I'll be right back okay now get most of this out. I might not have to take this top cover off. But this is what I have to go through. Only even worse than this because it's all packed in there if I left the damn cowling in there. It's got the cowling hanging up in the shed so I mean I can always put it on but You know, one time I, I started having a fire in here because I couldn't get it all out and I finally found out it was buried. The fins were packed up on the side here and it started burning a little bit. So, I figured let the air get in here. El natural. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to charge up that compressor. I'll be back. Put the air gun on it. And I'll blow the hell out of this thing. Okay, it's time to do some blowing here. That's it. charge the damn thing up again. Pain the ass up there. Right. Well, that's charging up. Let's see. Well, there's still stuff up in there. Damn cowlings, I'll tell you. If it wasn't so dangerous, I'd leave this thing off completely. Because it's electric start, it's not a pull start anyways. I take this damn thing right off completely and just run it open. But it is dangerous to have that spinning around without some kind of a cover in there. So. I the ass taking this off because. You know, there's one, two, two bolts here. Two bolts in the front. Yeah, I think we'll take it off. Come back in a minute. All right, we'll commence to take that off. I used to have to take the whole damn thing off, not just this. You know? That's what I say. I just assume leave the damn thing off, but it's dangerous letting that spin around like that, you know? Without a protection cover on it. Put that in the seat over here. Put that over there so I don't lose that. Hmm. The oil filler spout that got a smaller bolt on it. that quarter inch. So I'll remove that but right now. I'm going to remove the front two bolts first. The hood's a pain in the ass because that's in the way. This is a 1993 12 and a half horsepower. Uh, in the block valves. Well, why isn't that coming out? Must be mice pissing on the threads. No, no corrosion. At least one. Right yeah, let's just see. That'll move. Yeah. Okay, now I gotta go get a quarter inch come back on the video when I loosen up the uh, oil filler tube here 
Okay, I got my quarter inch. There's no way to hold the oil stick though if I eliminate that. Look at that crap in there. Holy shamoly. Look at the crapola. Man, that's the worst I've ever seen it. Start digging with the screwdriver. Start digging with a screwdriver here. You can see why I covered the carburetor here. Makes you think this thing was sitting outside in there with no cover or anything over it. It was protected. The damn mice there, boy, they. I wonder if this thing's gonna run at all. And we're gonna get the blow gun out and blow the hell out of this thing again. exhausted. Well, quite a bit. That's corrosion there. Probably from my mice piss. And a magnet on here. It's a magnet on the flywheel. And this is a piece of metal but it's got a lot of crap on it. I'm gonna get a wire brush I guess and try to clean it out but I don't dare try to start this thing here. I don't know if it'll run. It did run last time. As a matter of fact I uh, put a, I added a gas shut off cock over here. It didn't have one and of course I, I changed the gas filter last year on that. Well let me put the camera down and try to clean that out better. Now, there's a little lug coming out of the bottom of this magneto. I think that's what this goes into. How the hell am I going to get that back in there? And what I'm going to have to do... I'm going to have to cut this wire, extend it, and just let it hang, and, and then connect it up. But it's the only way I'm going to be able to shut this thing off. You know, i got to have a sh way of shutting it off, so... But I still got, I got it pretty well cleaned here, but I got to clean this side. I got to get some rags and clean this out and blow this out some more. 
And I cleaned this cover out pretty good. Still got a little more to do. I got to wipe it with a rag and stuff. But I'm not going to be able to pull this terminal through this small hole. That's the way it is, I guess. So what I'm going to have to do probably is to cut this wire or disconnect it here. Because I added these wire things in here. This was just loose before. I think what happened is it must have been a disconnect here and you pull it through. That's what I think it was. So what I'm going to have to do is to break it here, pull it through, connect it here, put it through here, and then so on. But let's go in here and clean this mess out. Boy, I'll tell you, this is a, this is a real mess. And of course, the engine oil too leaking out of the thing makes it even worse. Well, I'll tell you, I'd like to leave this damn thing open. I really would. But they got no way of supporting the oil stick, so can't do that.